Here's where the universe began, and where it will end. Everything wrong with the universe soon will be right, the way it has to be. Don't you understand? There's no one left to stand in my way, and nothing you can do except talk. The Zero Hour represents... Their fearless leader. Ha! The farther he rises, the farther he falls. And uh, Zero Hour is basically the superhero version of uh, putting everything in its place. My enemy's friend is still my enemy. For the last 10 or 12 years, we've had glitches in time, anomalies in time, bleeding over into the DC universe. As this happens, time gets more and more chaotic, the universe becomes more and more afraid, and the space-time continuum starts to fall apart. Time is in desperate need of uh, of being cleaned up, and only the DC heroes can, can make that difference. I will reorder the universe, and you will not stop me. One of the things about uh, Zero Hour and Zero Month is that it's, a, it's sort of a generational saga. In a way, uh, we introduce a, a brand new set of characters to the DC universe, uh, characters like uh, Impulse and uh, Damage and Anima. Right after Zero Hour ends, we start publishing a month of number zero issues, which we're calling Zero Month. And that is a place for you to see and experience, along with the heroes, their beginnings, their current status quo, any changes that are happening. You're going to get the iconic images. You're going to get Superman's planet exploding. You're going to get him dealing with his uh, high school sweethearts and his current nemesis. The same day that Superman's rocket arrived here, uh, this individual was born. It's a story about a kid by the name of Kenny Braverman, who was Clark Kent's best friend all through school. He is also somebody who hasn't been raised by Ma and Pa Kent. At the same time in Metropolis, when they happen to be working around the Superman statue, they find that that once used to be Superman's tomb, and it still is, because Superman's body is still buried underneath the statue. In all the other books, you're going to see the moment that makes the character who he is, what he is, that dictates to him why he acts. And there's, there's no more important scene for any character in all of literature than the moment that he decides to do what he does or the moment he decides to keep doing what he's doing. I remember you. Zero Hour is the best opportunity since May of 1939 to join the Batman saga. Everything that you need to know, you'll find out if you read the, the zero issues of the Batman titles. And for readers who have been with us for years and think they know everything about Batman's backstory, well, let's put it like this, there were one or two things we forgot to tell you up till now. Ha! Another method. Oh, this is the time to come in on Wonder Woman. If you weren't quite sure who she was between the uh, historical check-in and the uh, the new artist Mike Diodato, um, now's the time to get in on the fun. Paradise Island is going to be returning, uh, previous to Zero Hour, and when she goes to happily reunite with her mother and her sister Amazons, she's going to find out that a lot of things have changed including her mother's attitude towards her and as a result there's going to be a call for a new contest to see if Diana is indeed the person who should be the Wonder Woman the ambassador to man's world it's crisis time in the DC universe so it's time to throw another flash on the fire it looks as though he doesn't survive we uh, introduce a character named Impulse who is essentially at least at the outset uh, a protege for Flash, a teenager who moves at the at uh, roughly the same speed. Maybe he may even be faster, um, and he may have to be. The zero issue of Green Arrow is a superb opportunity for someone who's maybe heard of the character but never read it to pick it up. It'll give you everything you need to know about Green Arrow, as well as a completely fresh new take on it. Uh, the character's been stripped away to nothing and here we get to see him sort of rebuilding himself figuring out what it means
to be Green Arrow, what it means to be a hero. Take my advice for a change. Don't get involved in this. Robin has learned that awful adult lesson that you can't ever completely trust anyone. Wishes that were not true, but it is. He also has problems with his own father. Uh, Jack Drake, Robin's father, has made a recovery from his own injuries, is therefore more able to monitor his son's activities. That makes it very difficult for Tim Drake to continue his Robin activities without blowing off his secret identity. <laughs> this should be interesting. In Zero Hour and in the Zero Hour issues afterwards, uh, the new Green Lantern, Kyle Rayner, is going to have it out with the old Green Lantern, uh, Hal Jordan. Whoever has the ring at the end of Green Lantern issue zero is going to be a Green Lantern for the foreseeable future. You're so wrong. I'm the one who sees the future. In Zero Hour, the League is, a, is certainly a major player, a, a group of major players, let us say. The Justice League America, however, reforms in Zero Month. Don't you see it doesn't matter? Nothing can stand in my way. It's, it's a month where we show people that anything can happen in the DC universe, and will, and that the future is different and exciting. The Zero Month is an incredibly good time to pick up on Hawkman. Since he has such a long history, the Zero Issue allows new readers to come in and pick up not only on a new era in Hawkman, but on one where we're pretty much starting from scratch. The New Titans are DC's newest group of uh, orphaned characters. They all come from backgrounds uh, where they don't necessarily have a home, family, friends. They're a bit alienated. They're a bit left out. And they banded together under the, the operation of Checkmate, which is a government organization within within the DC Universe. Well, the Dark Stars is a, a, a intergalactic police force that's been around for quite a while. But as a result of what's happened to the Green Lantern Corps with Hal Jordan uh, destroying his former colleagues in the Green Lantern Corps, the Dark Stars find themselves left as the only cops in the galaxy. This one thinks he has something new. Ha! Tell me something I don't know. So the role of Starman has to pass on to Jack Knight, who doesn't want the role. He's not a spandex kind of guy. He loves uh, nostalgia. He, lo he deals at a shop uh, that handles items of nostalgia and popular culture. So he bases his whole outfit, his whole style of doing things uh, on what he knows. He, he may have to be Starman, he's still looking into that, but he's definitely gonna be Starman on his own terms. Primal Force will always be there to battle the dark forces that have uh, come out of hiding, so to speak, uh, coming out of the dark corners of the DC Universe to plague it once again. Because Superboy is young, uh, he doesn't always play by the rules. Uh, he doesn't always think before he acts. Uh, Superboy is more inclined to just you know, take action and worry about the consequences later. The Ray has the absolutely unlimited ability to absorb all solar radiant energy and then play it out. Uh, power blasts, uh, super, you know, solar flares. Um, he can manipulate light and uh, make light constructs to look like anything he wants to. So he can uh, fool the villain by casting a, a light illusion, if you will, or, or change his appearance briefly, if that will suit the most powerful being in the DC universe who happens to be a fairly normal kid who's just trying to figure out not how to save the world, but maybe get a date or keep his job down at Clucky Chicken. The outsiders feel that certain laws can be broken if it's for a greater good. This is basically a bad good team, not an anti-hero team, but a team that feels like they can go beyond the law. So he became Guy Gardner Warrior, and in essence, he is now the ultimate warrior. His body is the ultimate defense system. Anything you throw at him, his body will react to it and meet it, match it. If um, you're shooting him with bullets, his body will armor plate itself. You may have new powers, warrior, but you're still on the wrong side. 
Lobo means he who eats your entrails and enjoys it. Um, that's what the word Lobo means. In, uh, in Zero Hour, the Legion sacrifices themselves for their timeline. Uh, the, the time uh, has gone so far out of control that there's no way to save the 30th century other than, to, uh, other than their heroic sacrifice. Not even the future will escape my grasp. Steel has been trying to wipe away the residue of his past for a really long time. Zero deals with that uh, when the bad guys get hold of his armor and Steel has to get it back. And in trying to get it back, he realizes that either it or he has certain properties that are unexplainable. <laughs> Rebels 94, which is their story told in a very different situation because they are no longer outer space cops. They're now outer space basically terrorists, you know, five characters that are uh, you know, desperately seeking harbor in a very hostile universe. The character Anima is Courtney Mason. She's a 16-year-old uh, runaway. And her family, we find out in uh, Anima Zero, has been connected to an interdimensional war that's been dating back over thousands of years. She's really the hippest like link we have right now in the DC universe with pop culture. Aquaman has always been the guy who will just about take just about anything. He's, he's I mean, his, his wife went crazy and, and left him. His son got killed. Uh, Aquaman lost his kingdom. And so he's, you know, been constantly hit. It seems like every time he gets attached to something, attached to somebody, to something, he loses it. He's an adventurer. His weapon is a knife. He fights supernatural evil with a knife and an attitude. He's fate. The doctor is out. The character himself is sort of an ancient spirit that in inhabits the body of uh, Jim Corrigan, who is a cop that was killed in a gangland slaying in the 30s and refused to accept judgment. And uh, as a result, is now uh, sort of cursed with this spirit of the specter within him. And the specter is sort of an agent of biblical vengeance. And uh, if you do wrong, he gets you. Your mission of vengeance doesn't concern me. I have a higher mission. Uh, Deathstroke will be redefined as a character, and you're going to learn a lot more about his abilities. Even Slade Wilson, Deathstroke, doesn't know what he's capable of. Damage is basically a fusion reactor, and as he begins to fight, Damage begins to build up power to the point where he basically explodes and can destroy upwards to a city block, depending on how big of a charge he's built up during the course of a fight. A block, maybe, but not enough power to stop what must be. The gunfire is basically uh, an environmentalist named Andrew Van Horn. His ability is to take any weapon, take any object and turn it into a, a f um, firing weapon by agitating the molecules inside of it. Manhunter is Chase Lawler. He becomes a hunter, a stalker, a preying on, on criminals, lonely people, anything on the fringes of society. Can he do that, survive with himself, find a way to retain his humanity and still have that kind of thing? That's what he's got to face. That's what he's got to do. The Justice League Task Force is finding itself reformed as of the zero month. The Ray is part of a core new membership of younger um, less trained characters who are looking to the mentorship of Justice League members to bring them up to speed on what it is to be a hero in the modern DC universe. We listen to you like you could influence time and space. Ha! You can talk all you want, but you're still part of my universe. Surprise! Four, three, two, one, zero! I announce the creation of a new era. One day, you will understand.